Hello and welcome to part two of electrochemistry. Um, a lot of examples, a lot of mathematical applications. So the concepts will be buried in here a little bit, but a lot of it's math, 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 reason it through math. So let's do an example of drawing the galvanic cell for nickel zinc. So galvanic means that E has to be positive. Remember, electrolytic means it would have to be negative. So I have to flip one of these. The one that I'm going to flip is the one that's going to make it positive. So I've got uh, negative for both of them. So I'm going to flip this guy around. So that means I'm going to have zinc yields zinc oops, plus two plus two electrons. And that's now going to be positive 0.76. And I'm going to make this disappear so I don't look at it anymore. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do now is uh, draw the cell. So here we go. Let me get my thing. Metal. Whoop. Metal. Whoop. I like to put my anode on the left. Anode does oxidation. Oxidation is loss. This is my anode. So my anode is going to be zinc, which means this will be zinc which means I'll throw in some zinc ion and some nitrate. A little water. That means this is nickel. Throw in a little nickel plus two ion and a little nitrate. Now, sometimes they have different charges. It could be nickel plus three. It could be a couple of different things. I need to put my little wire here. I need to put my salt bridge, my wet string, right? Um, anode electrons flow from anode to cathode. Anode is over here, anode, cathode. Electrons flow from anode to cathode because if you look, this side is making electrons. So they're going to be made at the zinc one and they're going to go over and down into the nickel one. Okay, so there's my electrons. So my electrons are flowing to the right. That means my negative part, my nitrate, will flow to the left. And my K positive will flow to the right. Um, the other things that could be asked or indicated here is, do you see that zinc is turning into zinc plus two? That means it's going to dissolve. And nickel is going to plate. So what's going to happen is the nickel plus two concentration will go down and the zinc plus two concentration will go up. Look at concentration. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's pretty much it. Woohoo. All right. Electrolytic cells. You need to have a battery attached. Okay. The voltage of the battery must be greater than the negative calculated voltage. Okay. So that means that you, as long as it's bigger, it'll work. It doesn't have anything to do with speed, just bigger voltage. So an electrolytic cell is non spontaneous. An electrolytic cell has a negative voltage. And then you attach a battery with a larger voltage to make the reaction go the electrolytic way. Okay, so that's the first thing that's kind of different. The next thing is sometimes, oops, I'll let that rest there. Sometimes we have non-standard conditions. Okay, standard conditions will be one atmosphere and one molar. First thing we're going to look at is looking at some delta G's and some E's. Delta G is in joules, not kilojoules. To remind you, a negative delta G, somebody forgot to change the font to symbol, is spontaneous. And a positive E is spontaneous. N is the balanced number of electrons transferred from the equation. F is a Faraday's constant, which is 96,500 coulombs per mole. That's just fancy. And you'll see it with the cursive E F. <laughs> It's so fun. Look at the beautiful fondness of this world and the cursivity. And Coulomb is the unit for charge. E naught is the voltage at standard conditions. Okay. One molar for all solutions. Temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298. Wait. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, 298K. The voltage is in volts. And a lot of times people forget to put the volts on it. Um, it's found by adding the half reactions properly flipped. And the voltage does not change when you double or triple. So let's take a look at these two reactions. We did these before. I'm sorry I didn't subscript and superscript properly. But I think you do see that I have five electrons and I have three electrons. Okay. I hope you recall that this is what we flipped. Right. 
But whether we flipped it or not, um, you see the least common multiple of electrons is 15, right? Smallest number, both three and five go into is 15. But when I do that, um, recognize that I'd multiply this by three. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know. And this by five. The voltages do not change. The voltages are constant. Now, it is flipped, so we are considering it as negative 0 0.036 volts. That's it. So I like to think of voltage as attractiveness, right? So if somebody's more attractive, is somebody more attractive they're twins or triplets? No, right? They are either attractive or unattractive. They are either, hey, what a cute little honey, or what an ugly little honey, right? So either one works, okay? Okay, calculate delta G for a copper plus two galvanic cell. So let's, and I clipped part of it on here. Let's look at our equation again. Delta G equals negative NFE. You know I love my equations. Delta G equals negative N F. That's an F E. So that means we're going to have to figure out which one, what the E is going to be from here. So silver and copper two. Notice how these are both reductions, so I have to flip one of them. I have to flip it so that I still have a positive value. So I'm going to flip the bottom one so that positive 80 is going to be bigger than, positive 80 is going to be bigger than negative 0.34. Okay? So I have, I'm going to write these down. AG plus electrons is going to give me, I'm sorry, AG positive plus electrons is going to give me silver. And that's going to be positive 0.80 volts. And to rewrite this, I'm going to have copper. It's going to give me copper plus two plus two electrons. And that's going to give me negative 0.34 volts. So my overall voltage is going to be 0.46 volts. Uh, that number of volts right there is where people forget to put the units. And I think it's just because it is um, oops, 0.8 minus 0.46. Um, and I think it's just because of subtraction. We forget to put it in there. Oops, yeah, okay, that's good. So there's my voltage, and that's E, okay? N here, you see how I'd have to multiply this by two, right? So delta G is gonna equal negative two times a Faraday, which is 96,500. You will see some books, if you're a Googler, and I know you are, 96,485 coulombs per mole. I like three sig figs, both of them are 100% equal. And then my E is 0.46. So notice I have a positive voltage, so my delta G better be negative, and it will be. So I'm going to have negative 2 times 96, 500 times 0.46. I get negative, wow, 88,780, but that's going to be joules. So the way you typically report that is in kilojoules. 1, 2, 3, 88, negative 88.8. Kilojoules. Not bad, I hope. Just plugging and chugging in an equation. Here's a new one. <gasps> Whoa, look at all the stuffs. But believe it or not, we know all of these. We know how to find E naught. We know R. We know T. Tricky parts about R is it's got to be in joules. Tricky part about T, and I didn't put it in there. T has to be in Kelvin, which I probably have in here somewhere, but. Um, N, we just found out how to do N. That's the fancy F. Whoa, the flower. Whoa. Whoa. Right? But it's really just the Faraday F. Right? And then Q is the same thing as it was before. It was products over reactants raised to their coefficients. Right? We did this before. And then only using aqueous and gases. Because remember, it was the concentration, right? So this is all stuff. It's just kind of all jammed in there, okay? So notice my voltage. You can change voltage by changing the temperature and concentration. So I'm going to change this. E is the voltage under non-standard conditions, standard conditions. R, Q, like we just said. Um, and then on this, notice how the voltage should be very close to this, but I'm going to subtract this. I want to point out that this number will be small. Okay, so you're going to subtract something small from it. So it'll be close. Now it could be a small positive, it could be a small negative, but that's it. 
When a reaction is at equilibrium, E is zero. So there's this joke and bumper sticker that say, old chemists never die, they just reach equilibrium. <laughs> okay. Think of concentrations like equilibrium shifting. Okay, so these concentrations, as a battery is used, the reactants turn into products. Reactants turn to products. Oh, okay. And as a battery gets used, the voltage goes down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So your battery, or whatever the system is, is better if you have a larger E. Okay? We have to use collision theory to explain why um, E goes up. Whoops or E goes down, because fewer concentration, right? So we're talking about concentrations, collision theory, your answer. All right, the mean one. Electrolysis. An amp is a Coulomb per second, and an amp tells you the speed of charge flow. Well, Faraday is 96,500 Coulombs per mole. Calculate the amount of time required to produce 1,000 grams of magnesium metal by electrolysis ah, electrolysis of molten magnesium chloride using chlorine 58. So here we go. So what I'm going to do is start with 1,000 grams of magnesium metal um, by electrolysis of molten MgCl2. So I'm going to have 1,000 grams of Mg plus 2. I'm making magnesium. I get that, but it's telling me the charge because Mg on the periodic table is plus two, chloride is minus one, so that matches what we expect of MgCl2. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a thousand grams of this, but we know grams, it doesn't do us any good. So we're gonna go into grams of Mg plus two and one mole of Mg plus two. Now go to the periodic table and you see 24.31, but you're a little bit scared, right? Does the plus two impact the mass? No. Um, electrons have such small masses, we ignore them. Okay. So now remember what I'm trying to do, I want to find the, turn this into time. So I'm in moles of magnesium plus two. And you know how electrochemistry is all about the electron. So I'm going to say one mole of magnesium plus two. Notice how these will cancel. It's going to be two electrons in magnesium plus two. Does that make sense? It takes two electrons to make Mg plus two to become magnesium with zero charge. I'm going to change that to two moles of electrons, but you get the ideas. Now I'm in moles of electrons. So now I'm going to start working this magic. And all I'm doing is factor labeling. So 96,500. Oh, man. I did that backwards. 96,000. Where's my button? Where's my eraser button? 96,500, whoa, 96,500 um, coulombs are in one mole of electrons. I'm going to add that little mole of electrons right there, okay? So now I'm in coulombs, and I've got amps, of 50 amps. So that means that um, an amp is a coulomb per second. So that means 50 amps are 50 coulombs in one second. Notice how that's flippable right? Totally flippable. So I can do 50 coulombs over one second, or I can do one second is 50 coulombs. So just to make your lives feel good about canceling out, grams of Mg plus two, right? I already did my moles of Mg plus two. Moles of electrons, coulombs, coulombs. What I have left is seconds. What I have left is seconds. And I just do the magic of my calculator. 1,000 divided by 24.31, divided by, yay, times two, times two, times 96,500, times 96,500, divided by 50, equals, wow, that's a lot, 158782, you can tell I made up this problem, 158,782 seconds. That's it. Okay. Next one, which is the same thing, but playing around with a different way. Chromium plus three solution is electrolyzed using a current of 7.60 amps. 
what is the mass of chromium plated out after two days? So remember, you're always going to start with, you start with time or money. Well, we're not going to have money or grams. Okay. In this case, we're going to start with time. Our time is 2.00 days. So I have to get rid of days. One day is 24 hours. One hour is, I'm going to take a shortcut, 3,600 seconds. If you don't believe me, tough noogies, go look it up. One hour is 3,600 seconds, okay? Now, whenever I see amps, I change that right away to 7.60 coulombs per second because that helps me get into my, I'm going to work into my uh, uh, unit canceling thing. 7.60 coulombs in one second, okay? So now I'm in coulombs, I'm trying to find mass, okay? Well, coulombs isn't mass. So now I'm going to use my Faraday, 96,500 coulombs are in one mole of electrons. Okay. So uh, Faraday really is the charge, 96,500 coulombs, and then one mole of electrons. So now, moles of electrons, I've got chromium plus three. So there's three moles of electrons in, let me make this a little less crowded, in one mole of chromium plus three, and then one mole of chromium plus three is going to be grams of chromium. Oh, no, I don't know the molar mass of chromium. No. Oh, yeah, it was 52 point something, 52.0. Thank you, memory. Um, and it wants to know what mass of chromium is plated out. We'll go with that. All right. Math time, two times 24 hours in a day times 3,600 seconds in an hour times 7.6 coulombs in a second divided by 96,500 coulombs in one mole of electrons divided by three moles of electrons in one mole of chromium plus three times 52.0 equals 235, uh, 236 grams of chromium. Woo, doggies, that was a good one. All right, let's do it. All right. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, no, this is a problem that I forgot to give you the initial part, which means we are. Dun, 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 dun. That was the last podcast of the year. Of the year. Let's have a moment of rejoicing. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a moment. Oh, yeah. Woohoo! See you in class. Yippee, yippee, yippee. Bye.